couldn't decide which books to take so i've got i've got like four books i'm taking with me to to spain which is probably not the best idea right i'm actually gonna get i'm actually gonna get them out now so you can check as well um so the books that i'm taking with me on my trip because you know a man can't be without his books even on a weekend trip i'm not sure if i'm gonna be able to, you know you don't when I leave, I'm probably going to decide which one I want to take because I think this is a bit ridiculous. This doesn't make any sense why I've got all these amount, this amount of books, right? But this is the books I'm taking with me, right? On a weekend trip to Madrid, which is like, I don't know, an hour and a half or two hours away from here, from London for, for the most part. And mm, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to have that much time to read them, especially when I've got the brunette nattering in my ear for most of the trip and her mates and her family. But, you know. These things happen sometimes. So, if you wonder what books I'm taking with me, I'm going to take Mindset by Carol Dweck, which I just started reading now, and it's fucking amazing. Really good, also sobering, and um, very insightful. I've got Holy Terror, a kind of unofficial autobiography on the great Andy Warhol, right? I've got Daily Stoic, because I've been reading this forever, you know? It's, my, it's a book that I've been reading since last year, I think I had it. I just keep going through it every year, highlighting bits that I like, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, Black Rednecks, White Liberals, which is an amazing, 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 amazing book that I highly recommend you guys check out, especially if you're trying to figure out what the whole Candace Owens, Black Republican sort of lark is about. This kind of sheds some light on it. It's not as mean-spirited and as nasty as what Candace Owens is talking about, and it's not as uh, attack doggy as what Tanasi Coates kind of like uh, quite eloquently described her as. It's not that mean, but it does kind of represent another... It does give paint another another picture of what it meant to be uh, a black redneck and a white liberal, especially before the 60s in America. So if, you, if you're if you interested in that, definitely I recommend you check that out. But look, look at these books I'm taking with me to Madrid. Does that make any sense with me? Does not make any sense? Um, for those of you listening on the audio, I've got four books, which I just read out the titles to you. And, I, you know, it's, it's fair to say the books that I buy are not small pamphlets. Or the books that anyone sells these is aren't small pamphlets, right? I, I don't... There used to be a time where there, there was a time where books were really small. I remember that being a thing. Or maybe I just had, I don't know, maybe I just didn't, I wasn't really paying attention. But I do remember books being a lot smaller. I remember there were, you had books that you read, right? Like uh, The Great Gatsby. And then you had like textbooks, like maths books and shit. That, that, that was it. There was no in between. But now you have books like, I don't know, like Tim Ferriss, for instance. He's got his book, The Tribal Mentors, which is sitting over there on the other side of the, of the table. And he's got another book, um, The 4-Hour Chef, which are fucking Bibles, right? They're kind of self-help books, but they're, done, they're kind of made in the style of a textbook. That's kind of kind of come into vogue a little bit more. And usually, whenever they do first runs of new books that I want to read, they always, they always tend to have them be hardbacks, which is always quite annoying. But I guess that's part and parcel of the... Maybe it's part of the book publishing world, right? You kind of have to do that. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, I've got four books here. I'll probably have to whittle them down to one or to two maybe i'm i'm definitely gonna take daily stoic with me i found i found these i found these little um monthly meditations on stoicism very 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 interesting and in case you're wondering what is the daily stoic i guess you know the daily stoic is uh by the reading the cover of it it says it's 366 meditations on wisdom perseverance and, and the art of living by ryan holiday ryan holiday is one of my favorite authors i've just got his new book um on audible or I downloaded it so on iBooks um, called Conspiracy, where he kind of talks about he made an entire book ex expose about the whole uh, Gorka thing when Peter Till, one of the former founders of PayPal, took down Gorka because of the, you know, they were releasing all these un they were kind of diving into people's business that they didn't need to dive into. I think they kind of ousted Peter Till as being homosexual before he had come out to any friends or anything. And then I think they were also responsible for publishing the video or something of hulk hogan i think the sex tape or something or whatever got hulk hogan in trouble remember when hulk hogan got in trouble and um he got um stripped of all these accolades in wwe and knocked out of the hall of fame all that shit yeah basically ryan holiday written a new book his new book out now is called conspiracy but he's writ the daily stoic he's writ um the obstacles away um trust me i'm lying which is an amazing book about his time when he used to be the marketing manager of american apparel under dov Cherney, however he pronounced his name so if you know anything about the american apparel guy you'll know that you know that book's fucking serious and another book that i've got as well obstacles away hmm, stoic 
Anyway, there's another book he's got as well that I really would recommend, but I definitely recommend you check out Ryan Holiday just because his career trajectory has been amazing. You know, he started off being marketing manager of American Apparel when he was like 20 something, so super, super young. And then from then on, he just kind of like, he kind of, it seemed as if he purposely took a step back and just became a writer. Um, but some of his books that he's written, especially his articles, just check him out on, on Twitter. He's a really good person to follow on Twitter. He always, he always puts out really um, insightful kind of like quotes on stoicism and just, just general great quotes that he puts out. And his article he writes are amazing. Check him out on Medium. I think there's another publication that he writes for two days you check out. So definitely recommend you check out Ryan Holiday. But I definitely want to take this with me because, you know, I'm rabbi- I've am i been rabbing on, this, rabbing on about this for five, five minutes anyway. So that's definitely something I want to take. Mindset, because it kind of made me question a couple of things. Just now, I, I read this on my lunch break today. I kind of got started on it. I'm kind of through the first, but kind of what, quarter of it, whatever. Right. So I, tr- I try and read at least two hours a day. Today. I managed to read an hour. So this is about an hour. And then this is about an hour's worth of reading, kind of, right? Yeah, a little bit. 40 minutes, I'd say, for the most part. Um, so, yeah, um, this book is really good, actually, about mindset. Uh, essentially, it breaks it down to, um, it kind of, it goes back to the idea of, like, nature and nurture. But they kind of just, Carol Dweck kind of segments it in in terms of, like, a growth and a, what is it? A growth and what's the other one? Growth mindset and something else bah, 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 bah. let's see here i highlighted something already da, 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 da. oh it's about so it's about even it's about people's mindset right so the idea behind it is about if you're a kid and you got i think it gives an example about if you're a kid and you got given bad results right for a test you thought you were going to get high results and you got you thought you're going to get a you get a c then on the then when you're going home and you go before you go home you well you go to your car to go home and you and then you see that you got a parking ticket then when you go call when you call your friend about what's happened like the parking ticket and the whole scores your friend kind of blows you off so you kind of got free back-to-back um quote-unquote losses right or else so this book kind of breaks down people in two groups of like what what do you see that scenario as you see that scenario as an opportunity for you to like bitch and moan that the world's out to get you or do you see that as opportunity for you to grow in each individual part which means maybe studying a little bit harder for the test that you didn't get the high result in maybe it's uh making sure that you pay the correct fee when you're parking your car or maybe contesting the fine or does it involve you having to call your friend and maybe clarifying what the issue was did, when you called them or maybe letting them know that the one you did call them and you didn't get the answer that you liked that you were a bit upset blah blah blah, blah, blah. so it kind of breaks them into two groups i wish i can remember what the, what the first one is growth mindset and something else so this book by kyle beck i highly recommend you check it out it's an essential reading for those of you who've kind of always felt as if because i don't know i read the i read the book about grit as well earlier about another lady who the name escapes me and I kind of got the, I, it's kind of worn me around because I used to always be more of a nature person, right? I used to think it was quite innate, like they were winners and losers because sometimes whenever you speak, it's like when you speak to somebody and they can only see the negative in something, I sometimes can't even get, I used to be not, I used to not to be able to understand how someone could formulate that sort of an opinion, right? Like everything that happened that was bad was bad forever. It wasn't like, it was like whenever they got given a bad piece of news, they couldn't see how it could possibly turn out to be positive, which it's not to be, it's not me being overly happy, happy enough to optimistic, but that kind of level of pessimism just never, it never, it never seemed like something you could shake in my own opinion, right? It just formed as something that you could just do. But then I guess when you think about it a lot and you look read these kind of books, you start to realize that that sort of pessimism is the end product but there's a train of thought behind it, right? So you kind of have to go back to the root cause and get the person to kind of reflect on how they got to that decision. Not the idea that, oh, no, it's just not going to happen, not going to happen. That not going to happen is just a result of it. That's just what you get at the end. That's like the bit of paper that comes out. But you have to go to the actual root. You actually go to the actual file and figure out, okay, how did you get to that decision-making process? And from there, maybe you can have, if the, and obviously the major, major part of it, the person has to be open to learn it they have to be open to kind of wanting to change what they've been doing before and they might they have to be open also to the idea that maybe what they were doing before wasn't working and what they should do now is maybe try something else because you know it's that famous what's that einstein quote 
about people um, insanity is ins- doing people the same things again and again expecting different results but it's not really insanity that's what everyone does right because it's comfortable it's easier it's it's more you you feel more uncomfortable and more at e and more less at ease and out of your comfort zone and exposed and open to ridicule when you try something new right because you know what's safe you know what works it's like I always use the adage of like, um, or I always use, because I hate people when people say that thing. You don't know what I say, right? <laughs> Whatever, you don't speak to me. But anyway, um, I've always believed, right, that it's the same idea whenever you go into like a Pret-a-Manger, a McDonald's, a Burger King, a Subway, right? You t- Sometimes you go in there with the idea of like trying something new. But then by the time, especially if, you, especially if there's a long queue or there's no queue, right and you're getting rushed or either way so sometimes when you've got too much time to think and you're in a long queue or when you've got no time to think and you catch them and, so, and there's no queue in there when you get you just revert back to type you just go back to what you're used to so if you're like oh i'm gonna try something new i'm gonna do this new thing like mm, no you're not mate you're gonna do exactly what you've done every single time and you're gonna order the exact same meal because it's comfortable it's easy you don't want to you don't want that weird eerie feeling of like ordering something new in the menu and then having it and figuring out oh, i'm wasting my money because it's shit or whatever it may be or you didn't like a certain thing so life sometimes i think for the most part we give people stick for that kind of idea of like oh oh you're insane man you're doing the same thing again and again for different results but we all do it in other parts of our lives because it's just the easier way to go about life isn't it because you just we just kind of want to make life black and white and easy we kind of want to make like life uh, like or unlike you know button but it's not as easy as that so these kind of books have kind of finally turned me around and i'm finally getting to the point now where i'm kind of thinking you know what with with the right student or with an open mind you can change anyone's habits or anyone's mindset you can you really can especially if you come out with love especially if you come out with compassion and you're really open to kind of uh, guide a person through that journey I think it is I don't think there's such a thing as a lost cause anymore and I used to really believe it just and again it's not me being overly judgmental but it's just you know whenever you interact with somebody that is the complete opposite of how you has the complete opposite idea of how you see things especially when it's not something you know overly personal you kind of really think huh how the fuck did you think how the, how did you get so far in life like thinking that way you know like generally thinking that you know, um, I had conversation with people, some people like this sometimes where they're like, they have like a weird, grandiose idea of self, right? They have a delusions of grandeur and they just can't seem to figure out that maybe the reason why they're getting held back is because they're not humble enough to accept the position that they're in now and make the necessary changes, implement the necessary habits, uh, perform the necessary f- duties to get to where they need to get to. Because in their head, they've, they've convinced themselves that they're David Beckham. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what, what, or how there's there's been probably little to no uh, external a- a- affirmation right there's been no one that's been coming up to you and saying oh my god you remind me of some of this guy who's played for man united it's just your cons it's just somehow some people have a weird brain where it kind of like not a weird brain where they kind of have like a closed circuit right a closed circuit loop it kind of just kind of just goes around and around and around and reaffirms anything that they kind of put in there so sometimes I used to interact with people like that sometimes, and especially when I've when I was of the thinking that people would would kind of acquiesce to kind of how I saw things. If we if we got to talking long enough, you start to realize mm, they're not gonna acquiesce. They're not gonna they're not come. They're gonna come round to what you're gonna say, mate. People have their own ideas, and as we've seen with politics nowadays, like the more you attack someone in their position, the more they just double down and hanker down on it because no one wants to come up. Well, no one, but some people would prefer not to say that they're wrong, right? Because they don't want to look Im- ash- dumb or embarrassed or ashamed, right? It's the same reason why these celebrities, when the movie doesn't do well, they just disappear and they don't talk again and they don't come again to around the TV and, until you probably f- hopefully forget about it and they, and they hit another one at the park, which I never really got. Especially in this era where everyone's vlogging and stuff. If you're a movie star and your f- move and your thing doesn't do well or your TV series flops that vlog after the flop is probably the most important vlog you'll ever do that instagram story that snapchat that's going to be the that's going to be the best piece of content you've ever made especially when it comes from a real vulnerable place you know like that's what people want to see they don't want to see the fact that you're on the red carpet and swanning yourself around and shit like yeah i'm over that but actually on the subject of the books i've got this weird thing right i'm not sure anyone else has has the same same position as me on this but hear me out I always say I buy these books every month and stuff. Things I like, I like to read, right? It's like my little, um, 
I guess I maybe did it in terms of trying to form a good habit, right? Because I was maybe forming bad habits before, like, right, drinking drugs and stuff. You're doing a bit too much of that stuff. So maybe I did this to myself to kind of make sh- discipline myself to always buy a book so that because I, when I buy his books, I read them all, right? I'm not going to just buy them and have them stacked up on my table for nothing. I actually read all the books. So maybe I did it in terms of, like, to kind of uh, discipline myself, make sure that I'm on a straight and narrow. Like, you know, actually, don't fuck around to buy your books. But there's also a weird, I don't know, I, f- I feel, right, this is just my own, own opinion, as if there's like a weird, um, there's a weird battle against, there's a weird, not battle, but there's, there's forces outside there, right, that don't really like it or kind of look down upon you when you're overly reedy, right, like when you like books or you like to read articles or you can quote things, there's kind of a bit of a, like a, ugh, a, an internal roll your eyes. Now... I don't necessarily go out of my way to say what I read or to mention stuff that I'm reading on the internet or whatever stuff I see in a magazine, but I'm at a bit of a disadvantage because I don't really have many friends, right? Many close friends that I kind of socialize with on an everyday basis. You know, I've got colleagues at work that I hang out with sometimes. I've got maybe some people I might see on the weekends here and there. If I go to a certain area, right? If I happen to go to Dawson, I might see certain people. If I go to the South, I'll see different small people. If I go to North, different people, blah, 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 blah. So it's not even like the same group of people. It's like a different community of them, right? So I don't necessarily have that. I don't necessarily have that base where I can, where I can constantly unload that kind of conversation. So whenever I have a conversation with someone, right? Any, any stranger, inevitably something that I've read, seen, um, listened to, like in a podcast will never to be come up and i sometimes feel as if like it doesn't it's not something it's not like i'm trying to it's not like i'm trying to show them how much i read right or let them know what i listen to but i sometimes get the feeling that they get they get that feeling and there's also this idea that sometimes especially i, I heard this sort of backhanded compliment a couple of times with my books and stuff like oh what book are you pretending to read now right and I get it, right? I get it, because if I was if I was that person, I was looking at me, I'd be like, "What the fuck's this guy, man?" Do you know what I mean, reading books all the time, saying this, yeah, you know I mean, it's just it's just annoying, and it? it's just just annoying. I, I like I get it, it's just fucking annoying. Like, put your book down and just I don't know, just bore your brains out like everyone else is doing. Do you know what I mean, like stop being such a I don't know. Just stop finding things to stimulate your mind, and it? it's just annoying, right? It's like the guy in the bar that knows everyone, all the languages. It's like uh, after twenty minutes, I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna want to punch him in the face, right? I'm not pretty sure, but some people would want to. Not me, because I want to be that guy, right? I want to bloody be like um limitless, in it, like Bradley Cooper and limitless. Take that pill and just start. I mean, fighting and shit, have a six pack and just start speaking mad languages. <laughs> that would be so sick, but. I do sometimes get that feeling and it's uh, my reaction to it lately, right, which is something I've never thought I'd do in a million years is to kind of, kind of hide my books. I found myself hiding my books, whether it's putting them in a the backpack, whether it's when I walk out with them outside, I kind of always, I always have the kind of cover facing um, in, uh, inside my body. So when I'm holding it in my hand, right, I kind of have it facing my ribs. I don't have the cover facing out so people can read it. Um, it's very weird, man. Whenever I go to read somewhere in a public space, I always try and pick the depth, the deepest corner away from everyone so no one can kind of see. It's very, very strange. Or even when I'm on a train, I'll kind of lower the book down so no one can see the cover again. It's a super strange thing, isn't it? Like, I think so. Like, it's like, what am I doing that's any different to anyone else? You know what I mean? Everyone's kind of looking down anyway, whether it's at a phone, at a free newspaper, at their trainers looking down at there maybe they got they bought a new bag or something right everyone's sort of looking down anyway looking up is you know weird because you might catch someone's eyes or like i do i remember i actually love doing that actually oh my god i actually love 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 looking eyes of strangers and just like trying to stare them out on trains <laughs> it was so hilarious man that was on the best like kind of you just kind of internal pranks that you never even record or anything like you just do them for yourself um or like or sometimes I used to go on the train or the buses and just sit eerily close next to somebody in an empty carriage. So you know sometimes when you get on a train and you have like an empty carriage or a bus and it's like, I don't know, it's the first couple of stops. I'll just go sit unnecessarily close to somebody, like just right next to them or the seat behind or the seat in front. Do you know what I mean? And you can just, you can just feel the fucking vibe change. You can just feel them getting annoyed. Or when, or the best one, you know what the best one is, right? The best prank I used to like doing is you sit next to someone 
uh, on the packed bus, so it's packed, right? No seats anywhere. She so just has to sit next to me. Oh, sorry, man. You just sit, right? Or you do the kind of polite sit where you're sort of like on the corner, right? You're like, oh, you know, I don't really want to be here, blah, blah, blah. But then when everyone gets off or people are slowly getting off and people are jumping, because people do it at the time, right? Sometimes it's slowly, so the, the bus or train slowly empties and everyone kind of moves to a seat that's got more room next to them, right? Naturally, right? That's what a normal person would do. Huh? Not I. I would remain seated in that seat next to that person and just vibe it out <laughs> until the very bitter end. And you could just feel them getting annoyed. Like, what the fuck? There's a seat right in front of you, especially when you're on the bus and you've got the, double, the upper deck. You got the seats in, like in the rows, right? And there's like a rows of like, five rows of seats in front of you, free. And you're still sitting next to that dude that you sat next to 20 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, first off, for shit. Anyway, but my mind is so mad. But anyway, um, s- someone saying your mind is so, imagine telling yourself your mind is so mad that, that that's how to pat yourself on the head, man. But yeah, um, I I hide my books a lot, man, which is really bad, um, because I feel as if like intellectual intellectualism is not really rated highly these days people don't really give a shit if you read shit right everyone's kind of like we're in this weird little group thing where they're showing the same seven guardian articles every every other week right um i get it for the most part but you know i don't necessarily do this as well for um external gratification either i'm not looking for pats on the back or people to say oh my god that's great what you're doing like could care less right so i'm not that bothered about it in general but it's just an interesting thing to analyze you know like people really hate it when you read books man like i i can feel the disdain around me i can feel it like for sure strangers colleagues friends i can feel the kind of like oh here he goes reader reedy here he goes reedy aggy you know reedy reedy like i get it i get it i get it i get it it's one of the, i don't i haven't necessarily got an opinion on it yet i haven't really you know i don't really get annoyed by it because i understand man you know if i if i saw me reading books i'd get pissed off too but say la vie what else is on the ticket? 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 What else is on the